Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and every human on the spectrum! Welcome to... And now what? I am Luca Nicora, your host, and today we'll be talking about what is really killing you. Fun! And stay till the end of the video to get some tips on how to improve your life. Less killing is even more fun. But before we get into this fun topic, I'm getting an anxiety at time just thinking about this. Like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel to tell the algorithm that, yes, this video is fun. I said fun a lot in this video. Now let's talk about the El uh, uh. Now let's talk about the amygdala. Sounds like a Star Wars character's name. Princess Amygdala. I'm Princess Amygdala. You're my only hope. Imagine I have Cinnabons here. Yeah. The amygdala is a region of the brain that is associated with emotional processes. Also known for the fight, flight, freeze system. Freeze is a kind of a newer concept, but it's part of this where instead of fighting or fighting, you're just freeze in anxiety. It's part of the limbic system that mediates emotions and memory. And the amygdala, pheromones, and an aliopetitive and repulsive stimuli, including tastes, odors, and sexual imagery, can produce physiological and behavioral expressions of emotional state. Well, I have to say something smarter. You won't believe anything I say in this video. Just believe in yourself, man. In other words, when you smell pie, you get hungry. When you see broccoli, you just want to kill yourself. Is that just me? Bit of a strong reaction. When you see Beyonce, you start feeling all sorts of butterflies in your stomach. Bend the knee to the queen bee. All that is because depending on the emotional intensity of the stimuli, the amygdala will create an appropriate response. Well, at least that's how it's supposed to work. What if our brains were made by Ikea? Honey, what, what is this neuron for? Oh, yes, I'll just uh, keep it for later in the drawer. The frontal lobe is the thinking brain. It's the part of the brain that rationalizes things, solves problems, and makes decisions in a logical way. Logical is different for everyone since we all have different backgrounds and levels of education, but you get the gist of it. Hands up, this is the amygdala hijack. An amygdala hijack is a personal emotional response that is immediate, overwhelming, and out of proportion compared to the actual stimulus because it has triggered a much deeper emotional threat. Do you mind if I have the last piece of cheese? What? I, I, I just, just want the, the, the cheese? How did you do this to me? Sorry. Basically, the amygdala responds to the perceived threat before the information is able to be processed by the frontal lobe. In fact, study finds that in a way, the amygdala is our own personal risk manager. In fact, study finds that people take much more risks when their amygdala is damaged, which are linked to uh, drinking, gambling, and sexual addictions. Las amygdalas, baby! What happens in las amygdalas stays in las amygdalas. If you want me to talk more about the different parts of the brain and their functions, let me know down in the comments. But if you're already a brain expert, like the video and write... Buy your beard. Thoughts and feelings have an effect on the body, which is why you want to keep track of that. Sounds basic, but depending on the feeling you have, certain chemicals are released in the brain. For instance, if you feel happiness or gratitude, chemicals like oxytocin will be released, which will make you feel happier, look for connection, fall in love. However, if you feel anxiety and fear, cortisol and adrenaline will be produced by the brain so that you fight or flight a situation to preserve your life. These hormones are highly adaptive. They have protected us from wild animals to wild warlords to, well, wild neighbors who just put their music too loud. Yeah, we have the same reaction in the body. A little too much there. Highly adaptive. Don't put that on your resume. Before we talk about the tips to deal with anxiety, let's see what causes stress. There are three types of stressors. Physical stressors like accidents, traumas, falls, getting bitch slapped and challenged for a duel. Chemical stressors like viruses, bacteria, toxins, blood sugar levels, or, or hangovers. I'm quite the hangover expert here. And emotional stressors like traffic jams, family tragedies, parenting, and the worst of all, internet connections. The Wi-Fi is not working again! 
goddamn Wi-Fi. The fight or flight mechanism is highly adaptive and it is what protected us for so many years. However, now it has turned against us. It has become self-destructive. It has become maladaptive. These stressful reactions become habits, patterns, and part of our personality. For instance, complicated political situations. For the last couple of years, we've all been very confused and feeling separated from each other. Watching the news creates a lot of anxiety when you see how horrible the world is out there. Looking at accounts of hot guys and hot girls out there also increases anxiety and self-worth. What about the content you watch and listen to? Mm, like murder podcasts. Okay, these are actually quite fun. Okay, they may be fun, but whenever you go back home, you run to your door to avoid encountering any of your neighbors because you're pretty sure that one of them is Jack the Ripper. Actually, he might be. Steven? And the winner is... COVID-19 in the 2020 pandemic. I want to thank everyone, especially those who did not believe in me. Uh, thank you for not wearing masks and not using alcohol to wash your hands. Uh, and please don't forget me because I will not forget you and I will not be gone this year anytime soon. Thank you. Thank you. Study finds that isolation and loneliness is as bad as smoking. It increases risks of heart attacks by 30%. 30%. They say it takes 21 days to create a habit. And as you know, it's really hard to undo a habit. So what if you spend over 21 days with a fearful mindset? Thank you, pandemic. Thank you. And now that fear has become the norm, we may not realize it, but we still suffer from its effects. Okay, now I'm feeling very anxious. Okay, I know, I get it. I know that anxiety is not great, so what do I do with it? And now what? Ma che cosa facciamo adesso, cazzo di merda? And now what? What? Since there are three types of stressors, there are three ways of finding balance. Three ways? Mm. Physical balance. Do some exercise, go for a walk, for a run, go to the gym, go for a swim. Make sure that you get at least 30 minutes of exercise three times a week. In fact, exercising activates the frontal lobe, which helps regulating the amygdala hijack. Oh. Hi, Jack. <laughs> Funny. Get yourself a Fitbit to make sure you know how many steps you take every day, uh, and you can even track your sleep with that. Link below if you wanna get a discount. Chemical balance. Eating healthy food, vitamins, and enzymes. Make sure you get enough magnesium, zinc, and vitamin B, as well as healthy fat, like from avocados or walnuts, which also have vitamin B. Anxiety is linked with low antioxidants in the body, so make sure you eat enough beans, vegetables, fruits. In fact, berries are known to be very good antioxidants, as well as ginger and turmeric. If you want me to make a video about healthy foods let me know down in the comments i've done a lot of research on that so i can definitely provide a lot of ideas make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to be notified because very soon i'm going to be releasing another video about how food and mental health is related now back to the video healthy guts and mental health are strongly connected lots of hormones are actually created in the guts bad nutrition and anxiety and depression are connected emotional balance slow breathing indicates to the brain and the body that we are in a safe environment so if you feel a lot of anxiety, sit down, close your eyes, and for a moment, breathe very deeply. Practicing gratitude will help you focus on all the positive things in your life instead of all the things that you need to fix, which I think a lot about. Yeah. Gratitude is like a muscle. Ha. Practice your gratitude muscle by expressing it to your loved ones, if you can, on a daily basis. And every night before you go to sleep, think of three things of that day that you're grateful for. Reflect. Spend a little moment in the morning to close your eyes and project yourself in a life in which all your dreams come true. And allow yourself to live in that dream until you feel emotion rising up. Because no matter if that situation is true or not, the positive effect that these emotions have on your body will help you relax and feel happier. Take notes of triggers. Hey, trigger. When you feel anxiety, ask yourself, what situation, person, or thought may have created that anxiety. And that way, at the end of the day, you can think about that and use mental rehearsals to imagine yourself reacting in a different way and thus changing your patterns. The other thing you can do is avoid certain people, places, or situations to not have to deal with that same anxiety. However, avoiding a situation may not help solve the problem. That's of course if you're not running away from your responsibility as a human person. It's a case-by-case -case thing, like at the airport.
case. Funny. Look for some therapies that may help you like EFT or tapping therapy or EMDR. They have shown a lot of positive results. I have playlists of songs that make you happy. In the morning, I usually listen to uplifting songs. In the evening, I have calming down sort of songs, but they make me feel happy and grateful for my life. I like to use oils to calm down at night as well. I have lavender or peppermint that also helps me feel relaxed. Meditation combines a bunch of things that I just mentioned, like physical relaxation, music, breathing, your senses. If you want to know more about brainwaves and meditation, check out this other video I made recently on that topic. According to Dr. Joe Dispenza, if you get two out of these three stressors in order, the third one will follow and you will find homeostasis. So look at the different parts of your life that could use improvement and change one thing at a time. Otherwise, it gets too overwhelming. I usually every month try something new, like I will stop coffee, or alcohol or sugar for a month and see what that does to me and that way implement new and better habits. That also helps me get out of a habit and replace it by a, a new one if I want to. So I don't get too stuck in my ways. Change at your own speed. That's really important because you wanna keep that compassion for yourself, my friend. So whenever you start hearing thoughts like, I shouldn't feel this way, what is wrong with me? Why can I get out of this? I can't change. These are judgments of your feelings and emotions. Feelings and emotions that just need to be heard and felt, okay? So just make sure that you make space for them, listen to them, tell them it's okay, that you are safe, and thank your feelings and your anxiety. Thank you. Thank you for trying to protect me. Thank you for trying to save me. But we are gonna be fine. So now last question, what do you want me to talk about? Let me know down in the comments. I wanna make these videos for you guys. I wanna build this community to support each other out and your comments really help. Thank you for watching this video and if no one has told you today, you matter, I love you, you are a rock star and you got this. Invest in your future, invest in yourself. See you guys in the next video. Peace. Funny.